The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. This book is cool. Welcome to this episode of This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We have an adventure book today. It's called Roughing It on the Oregon Trail. We were a hundred prairie schooners and over twice as many people. A village on wheels. A small community headed west. These two children are twins. And there's a special sticker on the book that says, Jump back in time with the time traveling twins. So this book is one in a series of books about these time traveling twins. We have a special guest with us today to tell us why she thinks this book is cool. With us today, we have actress and director, Carolyn Michael. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Beth, how are you? I am well. Thank you for being with us today and sharing your love of reading and your love of books. You bet, I'm happy to be here. This book is cool. It is cool. So what is one of the reasons why you think Roughing It on the Oregon Trail is a cool book? Well, I think that it's great how they all dress up in, in clothes from the past and they travel through time wearing grandma's magic hat. Yes, oh, that's wonderful. You have a hat like grandma's. I love that. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> well, I enjoyed in the book that the time traveling twins had to wear the clothes of the time they were traveling to so they wouldn't stick out. They, they would look like they, they were of that time. And I thought that was a, an interesting touch that the author put in to make this fantasy more believable. That's great. What fun, for, what fun to read about that. The time of the Oregon Trail and people who were traveling from the Eastern United States across the territories to get to California or to get to Oregon, that was a long journey that took months and months and months. And they encountered a lot of things that they were not used to on the trail. Is there anything that, that um, really caught your fancy about who they experienced along the trail? This book has a lot of interesting historical facts about Native Americans, like how they would, they would have to move their villages, their whole village from place to place to find better hunting grounds because otherwise they couldn't eat. So I thought that was just fascinating. They had to like pick up and move <laughs> yeah. the whole village, everybody like, come on gang, we're all going now. That was, that's, that's so amazing that they were able to do that. But if you think about it also, animals go from place to place. Giraffes go where the, they can have eat off the tops of the trees. Different animals have different patterns that they move in throughout their lives in order to feed their their families mm -hmm. and that's what the native americans were doing and they were they lived off the land and so they were they were very connected to that which i think is fantastic nowadays we don't do that as much it's true and we go to we go to the grocery store <laughs> we do go to the grocery store all of these families that were moving from the eastern United States across the territories, this was a trip of a lifetime for them. I, I was really moved by some of the stories of um, the families who had saved up for years and years to be able to afford to, to make this trip. So yes, it's, a, it's important, you're right, it's important to plan and to save up. And of course, these people walking across the earth 
really had to plan and save up and, and figure out every single day what they could do each day, what they could accomplish. And it's a good life lesson for us now. They had a much harder life then. And I, so I, I think that when these, uh, when these kids dressed up with grandma's hat and were able to tra time travel back, they got to find that out. They did. There were wonderful times. I, I think about them all gathering around the campfire together and and sharing the stories of their journey. And yeah, there were a lot of lot a lot of dangers on the journey to to Oregon. Food would run out. The the wagons could break down, and 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 many people got sick. But the hardships were worth it for the settlers to find a new home, a new place to be. That seems very adventurous to me, but I admire that so many people did do that. And I love learning that history about people. I, I wonder, do you know much about the history of your family and, and where they came from? I do know a little bit about the history of my family. Yes, I had part of my family came from Alsace-Lorraine, which was sometimes French and sometimes German, and that, and then the other part of my family came from Germany, actually, and they emigrated to the they immigrated to the United States early on in the 1900s. So we were lucky that my family came early enough to be here before there was problems in Europe during the World War. So I know that about them, and I, I've I've learned about my relatives. One of my my great grand my great great grandfather was one of the first rabbis west of the Mississippi. Wow. Yeah, That's... And I, grew up, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, so uh, in the Midwest. And, and I've lived all over the country, this country of the United States, and it's been a new and wonderful adventure. Each new city that I went to, because there were different people with different ideas and different ways of dressing and different ways of being, and I got to experience all of that and pick and choose what worked for me to adopt into my personality, kind of like picking out the clothes you're gonna wear, what, what fits you, what fits you, and the kind of life you wanna have. And so I can look back to my ancestors and I get a lot from them. And then I can also look to the experiences that I have accumulated through my journey in life and putting on, trying on those different hats. Yes. <laughs> and seeing if they fit or not. I got this hat in Italy, actually, in real life. There you go. Well, I, I think in acting and in storytelling and in reading, we get a chance to experience other people's lives. And this book, Roughing It on the Oregon Trail, gave us an opportunity to learn um, some real historical facts, but at the same time, experience a story that was adventurous and interesting and entertaining at the same time. So yeah. I highly recommend this book and I'm glad that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for including me. It was great fun, great fun. Great, well, we'll see you again soon, I hope. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. I want to share with you one of the illustrations from the book. So this is a picture of the wagon train that people were on on the Oregon Trail. And I want to read you a little bit of what it says. It says, life on the Oregon Trail was pretty much the same day after day, hot and very, very dusty. Because of all the dust, Everybody wanted their wagon to be up front. But to be fair to all the families, whoever got to be in front one day went to the rear the next day. That way, nobody argued about it. It's an interesting solution to that problem. This map shows the United States from Missouri all the way across to the west, Oregon, Washington, and California. But before there were all of these states, this was a territory. And that takes us to our word bank today. The first word for our word bank is the word territory. A territory is an area of land under the power of a ruler or a state. 
The next word for our word bank is portraits. Portraits are paintings or drawings or photographs of people. Our next word is the word scouring. Scouring means to clean or brighten the surface of something. We're going to add the word wilderness to our word bank. Wilderness is an uninhabited region. And the final word for our word bank today is the word sentries. Sentries. Sentries are soldiers or people who are stationed to keep guard or control the access to a location. When the wagon train was making its way across the territory, each night they would post people to be the sentries to keep everyone on the wagon train safe. I love that our time traveling twins learned about their family as they were taking this trip across the Oregon Trail. They were actually able to see their great-great-grandmother and some of their other relatives make this trip. It would be interesting to experience what life was like for your great-great-great-grandmother. It would be fun to have a magic hat that you could put on. Some people like to explore their family by doing something called a family tree. And that's our activity for this week. We have an example here of a family tree, the Rios family. We have Grandma Sonia, Grandpa Sam, Abuelo Raul, and Abuela Nina. And they had a child, Gabby, who's the mom, and they had a child, Mateo, the dad. And then this mom and dad, Gabby and Mateo, had other children, Alejandro and Ray, and sisters Christina and Tia, and Jaden. So the family tree starts with who is the grandparents or the great grandparents, and then what children did they have, and what children did they have, and then as these children get older, you can add a whole nother layer to the family tree. It's interesting to think about your ancestors and interesting to think of what their life might have been like hundreds of years ago. If you create a family tree, we'd love to see it. You can share it with us at connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. It's so much fun to learn new things by reading. Reading truly is the key to succeeding. Until we meet again, my friends, we'll see you later.